You would think that having been busted in a lie, and I mean busted, busted, in humiliating fashion, like Republicans have been in their Don Quixote-style quest to impeach Joe Biden by implicating him in a supposed Ukrainian bribery scheme with his son, you would think that you would say, okay, man, okay, let me cry, uncle. Show a little contrition and back down. To spare yourself more humiliation, if for no other reason. But not these MAGA Republicans. Nope. They'd rather blame everybody else. We never knew who the informant was. All we knew was what Christopher Ray said. Now we see that the FBI arrested him for lying. It doesn't make sense. It's not the same treatment that we saw when the FBI figured out that the, the Steele dossier. Who knows, maybe this guy lied to the FBI, maybe it's all, maybe they're right, but I just see a pattern that seems to be developing here over the last three presidential yeah. elections. Maybe, 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 maybe. You know, it is absolutely wild to listen to these grown men refuse to acknowledge their obvious failure. But with this Republican party, telling the truth is asking too much. What you get instead is peak gaslighting. These folks are angry that the FBI even talked to informant Alexander Smirnov. They blamed the Department of Justice for arresting him for lying about the dates when he supposedly had contact with Joe and Hunter Biden, because those dates are the whole case. And they're doubling down because the lie just rings true in their heads and on Fox TV. Oh, and they blame the Democrats because this is Russia collusion 2.0, and they still can't accept that Russia collusion 1.0 actually happened, frankly. When you model your entire political party on a narcissist who lies all the time and takes zero responsibility, it's not that shocking. Except facts are facts. Republicans did, in fact, rely on this supposedly credible informant up until two days ago, eight days after Smirnov was arrested for lying. Smirnov's claims were very much central to all of their talking points, which they repeated over and over again on Fox and Newsmax. And the worst part? They rushed, they rushed out to promote this 1023 affidavit, even though the FBI warned Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley and House Oversight Chairman James Comer that it should not be treated as fact. On May 22nd of last year, when the FBI agreed to show them Smirnov's claims, according to an FBI memo about that meeting, the deputy assistant director made it abundantly clear that Smirnov's testimony remained, quote, raw, unverified reporting from confidential human sources, and that recording this information does not validate it, establish its credibility, or weigh it against other information. The deputy assistant director makes a point of noting that Grassley and Comer were cautioned that raw, unverified source reporting may lack that important context. What does that mean? It means that these men knew that this material was not verified, and they chose to amplify it anyway. Don't believe me. Just listen to outgoing Republican Congressman Ken Buck. We were warned at the time that we received the uh, document uh, outlining this witness's testimony. We were warned that uh, the credibility of this statement was, was not known. And yet uh, people, uh, my colleagues, went out and, and talked to the public about how this was credible and how it was damning and how uh, it, it proved President Biden's, uh, at the time Vice President Biden's, uh, complicity in receiving bribes. Um, I, I, it appears to absolutely be false and to really undercut the, the nature of the charges. Late this afternoon, a California judge who was asked by the Department of Justice to revisit a Nevada judge's decision to release Smirnoff granted a warrant for his rearrest. Smirnoff was taken into custody while he was meeting with his lawyers in Las Vegas. Joining me now is Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland, a member of the House Judiciary and Oversight Committees. And Congressman, I mean, the way it normally works is that you get information, you verify it, and then you publicize it and act on it. They did the opposite. But I first want to get you to react to the fact that this man, Mr. Smirnoff, has been rearrested. Well, look, there's obviously a lot there in terms of his connection with foreign intelligence. Um, he said he had less than $15,000. He had $6 million to his name. And so the special counsel in the case, David Weiss, obviously had uh, some serious reasons for saying that an ankle bracelet was not enough. And uh, he convinced the court. But I'm just learning that from you right now. But I'm glad that he's not going to be able to abscond and disappear, uh, because it, he's obviously now a crucial witness in terms of us figuring out how exactly they executed this plot of disinformation and propaganda against President Biden. 
You know, the thing that is more, even more disturbing than the fact that this man made up an entire story upon which an impeachment inquiry was launched is that it does seem to me that senior Republicans knew that this was not credible information. You yourself, sir, um, were allowed on June 5th of last year to view along with um, Mr. Grassley, Chuck Grassley, a version of this document, this document that's called the 1023. There had been a lot of fighting with Christopher Wray, the head of the FBI, over whether this could be seen at all because he was sort of warning that this isn't really final information, but Republicans demanded that it be shown. There was some question in their mind about whether you should get to see it, because I'm sure they knew you would actually ask some questions. In your mind, do you believe that James Comer and Chuck Grassley knew that this information was false as they were peddling it on Fox and in other on other right-wing news outlets? My well, I can't say that they knew. Um, I don't know whether or not they knew. But they had every reason to be extremely suspicious of it. And we were repeatedly warned by the FBI that these uh, FD-1023 forms are something uh, taken by an FBI agent interviewing someone. It could be a narco trafficker. It could be a terrorist. It could be an insurrectionist. Who knows who's giving the information? And so we were warned that there was no vouching for the credibility of the information that was reported. But they just took the football and they ran with it like 150 football fields worth to say, oh, we know that uh, Joe Biden took five million dollars from Burisma and, you know, there's all of this corruption. And they built this wild goose chase. They've gotten egg all over their face ever since, because it's been a comedy of errors, because nobody has been able to verify or authenticate those statements. And multiple individuals have completely debunked them, including Lev Parnas, who is Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man, who wrote a letter to Chairman Comer and to me beseeching the committee to call it off, saying there's absolutely nothing there. He spent a large part of his life trying to find something to document it, and yeah. there's nothing there. And the whole thing was a political setup job from the beginning. And now we know that the Russians were involved. Yeah. And he's, we spoke with him yesterday on this very show, and he said exactly that. He took it all back and said, don't believe any of it. I do want to uh, allow you to comment on what do appear to be some very strong sanctions that the Biden administration is about to lay on Russia, some of the most, or I believe the strongest sanctions that we've seen since they invaded, since Russia invaded Ukraine. Your thoughts? Well, look, Putin and his team are killers. Um, they have staged this bloody fascist invasion of Ukraine in order to overthrow uh, democracy there and to deny people their national independence and sovereignty. Um, and they are working to destabilize and undermine political democracies all over the world. Um, the death of Navalny is a tragedy for humanity because he was a great champion of freedom and democracy in Russia uh, and for human rights there. And uh, we can hope that his wife, Yulia, and his daughter, daughter Dasha and the rest of the family can carry on the work that Navalny was engaged in. But America needs to do whatever we can do to exact uh, sanctions against Putin. Obviously, they figured some uh, ways out to work around it. What we really need to do at this point is to get those $60 billion to people in Ukraine who are under the gun of these militarized drones and bombing attacks against uh, civilian installations and so on. We've got yeah. to uh, allow the bipartisan majority in the House and the Senate to get the money over there. And we will see uh, if that can be allowed to happen with this particular House of Representatives. Congressman Jamie Raskin, always a pleasure. Thank you very much.